Hey everyone, welcome to Psychology with my wife. I'm the wife. And I'm the psychology student. Welcome to episode 13. Woot woot. Unlucky 13, hmm. but hopefully <laughs> nothing goes wrong for the episode. Shouldn't. I don't know. Never know. Guess we'll see. Or something crazy will happen when we upload it into the world. Mm-hmm. Maybe the audio just won't record or something. Oh my goodness. Okay. Where is some like wood here? Well, that just makes the metal sound, but it was wood I knocked on, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> so I have some very exciting news to share with everyone. Oh, also, I just was saying this to J- Julian <laughs> before we started recording. I was like, we never say our names on the podcast. I don't think at least, but Julian. Yes, I'm Julian. Yeah. He's the husband, the psychology student, and the wife is Gianna, me. Nice. So, in case you're listening to this and you didn't already know who we are, now you know our names. So, we're basically best friends. (laughs) (laughs) And now you're going to learn more about me and you can celebrate with me in this great news. During the period of mine and Julian's wedding in June, I was writing my qualifying examinations in my PhD program. And I recently received word that I passed my qualifying exams. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Julian, can you please edit in some hype music for me, please, in the post-production of this? Thank you very much. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> On another note, we also got camping equipment. We got a new tent and a canopy. And every time I look at it, sitting on a balcony, I just get super excited because I'm like, oh, this will go here and this will go. And there's going to be so much room. <laughs> the tent we got is like a standing up tent. It's like a rectangular one. You can fit three queen beds in it. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. But we got it that way. St- yeah. I think you said it already, sorry, but you can stand in it. Yeah, yeah. Say, yeah. We got it just so we could like put all our stuff in it and like even... If say if it's raining, we could also put our chairs in there and just kind of hang out. Mm-hmm. So, because we're we're spending a week this year out at the campground somewhere. Yeah, when we go camping, we don't like to just go for one or two days. At least, just the way our schedules work, we're lucky as students that we have time in the summer where we can go for longer periods. And so we're like, when you're there for you know a whole week, mm-hmm. you're gonna run into some bad weather. Yeah. And so. My mom and dad actually gifted us these new camping pieces as Mm -hmm. our wedding gift. And so thank you very much, mom and dad. We are so excited to use them. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Our first time camping together, we got there and we didn't set up our like tarp and stuff to sit under yet. And it started pouring. First, it was like a couple spits. And we're like, okay. We were cooking. Yes. yes. (laughs) You forgot to tell that. That was the traumatic part. We had our tent and stuff set up. Mm Mm-hmm. And we had tried to set up our tarp, but I think the string we brought just, it wasn't working great. So then we were like, oh, we'll deal with that later. Mm -hmm. And we were like, we need to eat some food. Yeah. So we started cooking. Actually, we would have missed the rain, but for whatever reason, I could not get the wood to light. Yeah. That wood was terrible at this uh, provincial park. But anyway, eventually it. Honestly, it took me about 15 minutes to light the firewood. Mm-hmm. And that was even with dousing it. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And then it started spitting and we're like, okay, we need to cook this real fast. And then just like 30 seconds started just pouring. pouring. Yeah. So we're out but there. But we were just, so hungry. Yeah. So we kind of <laughs> held a tarp over us and the campfire and tried to finish cooking the food like that. It was... <laughs> A disaster, but very yeah. fun. Yeah. It was dry after that. <laughs> yeah. Actually kind of related to that. So because we got this new camping gear, Julian and I are selling our old camping tent, which is still in perfect condition. It's a five person tent, but you can only stand in like the center of it and you can only fit a queen mattress in it. So it didn't have that extra space we were looking for. So we're selling that on Facebook Marketplace. And I posted photos of the tent set up at the last campsite that we were at um, last August. And oh my goodness, <laughs> so far I've just been bombarded with people on Facebook messaging me 
not wanting to buy our tent, but just wanting to know the campsite that we were staying at (laughs) because it was beautiful. (laughs) It was. It was a very nice campsite and I hope campsite this year is just as nice. Yeah. I will upload a photo of our campsite into our highlight section on Mm. Instagram called As Promised. So you can peep out what everyone was obsessed with for our campsite. (laughs) I'm very much a person who, when we're going camping, I'm obsessed with being waterfront. And so I spend a pretty significant chunk of time trying to find us the perfect campsite. So hopefully our next one, it looks like it'll be pretty good. So I'm excited. (laughs) Anyway, though, let's get started. All right, so this episode is near and dear to my heart. (laughs) We are going to go a little bit into sleep cycles and, of course, sleep talking. A topic Julian and I are very familiar with from Mm -hmm. personal experience. (laughs) We're going to find out why I sleep talk. Good. Are we also going to find out how we can stop you from sleep talking? A little bit. <laughs> you know what? I don't think they really know. I oh, know. Well, Honestly, sleep talking is pretty harmless. So it mm-hmm. it just creates funny stories when Julian says interesting things in his sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the outline of this episode, we're going to look at the sleep cycle, uh, circadian rhythm, in order to really understand sleep disorders. Mm-hmm. Um theories why I could potentially be sleep talking and near the end we're actually gonna look at some sleeping zebra finches okie dokie no (laughs) idea what that is (laughs) what's a bird okay and finches I think must be just because they're so the brains are simpler than ours but they have I don't know about the bird's brain but there's been a lot of studies on finches Cool. Yeah. And then we're also something we've started integrating into the podcast is Reddit stories. And so we used to do, if you've listened to some of our episodes before, have dedicated sections for Reddit stories. And now in our last episode in this episode, we're trying out just incorporating Reddit stories. So this is our second time trying it out. Let us know what you are thinking about it. But after that point, I think I'm going to come in and read a few things from reddit on the topic of sleep talking Mm -hmm. and then we also have this app that we've downloaded where you can record yourself sleep talking and we're going to listen to some audio bits from there (laughs) (laughs) yeah so um as a background to our whole episode here there's four stages of sleep Uh, stages one two and three are called non-rem stages so stage one is a light sleep and it lasts about 10 minutes. And this is a stage where your body can kind of like twitch as it enters a sleep state. Mm. Cause it's like the in between stages kind of thing. <laughs> I'm in that stage the whole time. I think mm-hmm. that's just my permanent stage, just almost asleep and then twitching yourself out of it. And I feel like I never fall into like nice deep sleeps. Mm-hmm. You, I I can tell if you're in front of me and you're sleeping on the couch or whatever, (laughs) I can tell you're asleep because you'll just twitch. (laughs) Yeah. Julian always does that if we're watching a movie or something. He always knows when I've fallen asleep because my body gives me away. (laughs) That's also why I think, um, I don't know if you've ever heard that you should only take 15 minute naps. Oh, okay. So you don't get past that, Mm -hmm. like that stage. That's what I think. Hmm. Um, then he, we, and then when you wake up, you just feel tired. But they also say that 15 minutes of sleep is the same as an hour of sleep. You'll you'll feel the same hmm. if you take a 15 minute nap. Interesting. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't think I do. I think it gives you a little bit of boost, but I guess it depends the quality of that 15 minutes. Like, are you able to lay down and? actually really rest for those 15 minutes because for me if i would lay down for 15 minutes like i'm not gonna have 
slept <laughs> at all. <laughs> there, there's times when I fall asleep, I like lay down and not even 30 seconds. It's just like a warm feeling and I'm out. Yeah, Julian gets that a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's very sad for me Yeah, laying next to him. Because then he immediately starts snoring and sleep talking and <laughs> doing whatever, having a blissful sleep. And I'm just laying there like, please. It's, Please, it's me, me thinking sleep. of you because you won't sleep. So it's just like keeping company. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. yeah. Keeping me entertained. Mm -hmm. Don't feel lonely. Anyway. <laughs> Second stage. Uh, runs about 10 to 60 minutes. This is uh, when your temperature, your blood pressure, and your breathing rate slow down. Um. That's another reason I can tell you're sleeping also is your breathing sounds different. It's real <laughs> creepy that I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are my husband. <laughs> you can know me like that. Stage three is another 20 to 40 minutes. Um, it's the deep sleep, the slow wave sleep state. This is when your muscles start to re relax as the temperature, breathing, blood pressure drop even more. And this stage is when, where researchers believe that this uh, contributes to the insightful thinking, creativity, and memory. And then it takes about two hours in total to get to stage four over the last three stages here. Mm -hmm. um, and the fourth stage is another 10 to 60 minutes and is the only REM sleep state. And I guess I should mention REM stands for... Rapid eye movement. FYI. <laughs> this is when researchers believe that the brain becomes more active and also relaxes your muscles and you become immobilized. This stage of sleep is also when you have vivid dreams. Hence why your muscles become paralyzed so you don't act out your dreams. Mm, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. But obviously, people sleepwalk still, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, this cycle is repeated three or four times a night. So, knowing this makes sense that re <laughs> REM, <laughs> REM sleep disorders are usually the ones that do not involve movement. Mm -hmm. So, um, some examples of that are nightmare disorder. So these are vivid dreams that cause fear, terror, anxiety. And um, usually I think that's when you wake up um, very scared mm -hmm. <laughs> kind of thing. Um, sleep paralysis. Occurs during REM? Um, yes. Interesting because I wanted to ask you about that during the episode. I assumed you would have looked into it because I don't frequently but occasionally experience sleep paralysis mm -hmm. and have from a very young age like as young as you know six or so have memories of feeling paralyzed like that when I was really young I used to have that feeling when I was falling asleep like at home in bed and I would like be having kind of a bad dream or something and then I would have the sense that like my parents were checking on me in the room like to see if I was sleeping before they'd go to mm -hmm. bed and I'd remember like trying as hard as I physically could to like scream at my parents or to like move and like get their attention because you know for whatever reason my mind I was scared but then like I couldn't you know you couldn't talk you couldn't mm -hmm. move you couldn't do anything but my eyes, like, I swear I can, could see a little to know that, like, my parents mm. were there. And it was the scariest feeling when I was little being, like, I can't communicate with my parents. Like, they're looking at me and they don't see anything's wrong, but something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And I've continued to have similar experiences like that up until, you know, present time. Mm. But for me, I find I have those experiences when I fall asleep often in situations where I'm not intending to fall asleep. So mm. like 
I have lots of memories of this happening several times to me in like my teenage years, preteen years, when I would fall asleep on like the couch Mm -hmm. and my whole family would be either watching TV or cooking supper and moving around all about me. And then I would have this feeling like I've sunken into the couch and am like basically being eaten by the couch and I can't move and I can't talk. But again, I can see through my like mm-hmm. eyes just like opened the tiniest bit that I can see these like blurry images of my family moving about their life mm-hmm. in the room around me. But I am like frozen, sunken into the couch, can't call out to them, can't do anything. And so over the last several years, I've learned <laughs> just through myself trying to build like coping mechanisms mm-hmm. for when that happens. And I've been able to now talk myself through it when something like that happens and just you know kind of be like okay is this real like is there any part of your body that you can feel and you can move and like Mm -hmm. get myself through it and then eventually like snap out of it I guess but I'm interested if anyone else has those kinds of experiences because to me that's sleep paralysis that's I, I consider it to be sleep paralysis but I don't know if it's just maybe something weird that happens to me but Yeah, if anyone listening has had experiences like that, I would love to hear about them. I find I go into the deepest sleep when I don't intend to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. I agree with you that way. And also thought on that too about you feeling like paralyzed and stuff. I wonder if it's like partially, um, because like say on a normal night, you go to bed and there's not much noise going around. Mm-hmm. But when you fall asleep like that, it's background noise, all the noise, and it's not like active to it. But when you fall asleep, it's still there, I guess. Your senses are picking it up mm-hmm. and then you're dreaming it. Just a thought, yeah. Yeah, and definitely the idea of when you fall asleep kind of unintentionally. It's like when you go to bed and you're trying to fall asleep. Your whole mind and body are in agreement Mm -hmm. that you're trying to sleep right now. But then if it just kind of happens, then there's not that agreement with your mind and your body for what should be happening right now. So then it's like your mind kind of wakes up, but your body's still sleeping. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. (laughs) Yeah, genius. (laughs) There's... uh also REM sleep behavior disorder this one does involve movement and it's when you vocalize loudly or make aggressive movements in your sleep in the same sense it makes sense that parasomnias sleep disorders that occur during non-REM are physical and verbal activity and you usually don't remember the activities that happen either And that's, I mean, you talk to anyone, they usually don't remember that they slept, talked, walked, whatever, Mm -hmm. right? Although you remember sometimes, Mm -hmm. (laughs) which we'll get into, I suppose, (laughs) at some point. Yeah. Well, that that was actually, you you weren't asleep, right? And... The most recent one? Yeah, with with the the light. light. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I was not asleep, no. Yeah. So it scared me so much. (laughs) Gianna was just... laying there i suppose and i just randomly kind of jumped up and put my head on her stomach and what was i saying okay so if you're watching us on youtube you'll be able to see us reenact this a little bit if not you have to visualize so julian and i are in bed i'm on my left side Mm -hmm. he's on my right side and i'm laying like with my face facing up And I'm just laying there. It's probably been a couple of hours and I'm trying to sleep, but unfortunately not able to. And then Julian, just out of the blue, leans over. And so his head comes on my stomach, but like completely on my stomach. And he's like moving his arms around and he's like, no, no, stop, stop the light. No, 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 no. And I'm like, what What? what's julian (laughs) you know eventually he just goes like huh what and then like 
lays down and goes <laughs> back to sleep. And then the next morning, I asked him about it. And I was like, babe, do you remember, like, freaking out and, like, laying on me and saying, like, no, stop the lights or whatever? And then Julian did remember, actually. <laughs> yeah, and I was having a dream that Gianna was sitting above me with a flashlight and shining it into my eyes as I was trying to sleep. Uh, yeah, so I promise I was not doing that while he was sleeping, but pretty hilarious that he actually remembers it and there was a link up between what he was doing and what he remembered in his dream. <laughs> yeah, no, that was pretty funny. Julian also... I'd say the most common thing he does when he's sleeping is giggles. Mm. It's very creepy. Like it's a very, I don't know, sweet kind of <laughs> kind of giggle. Just <laughs> out of nowhere, I'm just laying there and suddenly Julian giggles for like five or ten seconds and then silence again. I'm like, okay, cool, 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 cool. Nothing odd going on here. <laughs> Um, <laughs> reminds me of Step Brothers too, when they both sleepwalk, and they just like tear the house apart. Oh my gosh! Yeah. <laughs> and it's like don't wake up the sleepwalker, and they do, and they like, what do they? They take him out of the house or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um. So Julian actually sleepwalks a little bit too sometimes, not as often, but. When we first moved to our new place in, uh, or our old place in Toronto, I don't remember if you'll remember this or not even, but there was this one night that Julian was trying to convince me, oh wait, no, this was in Lloydminster still. <laughs> not that it matters, but anyways, when we were in Lloydminster, I think this was one of my first instances of you doing something odd in our sleep. And you were trying to get me up in like the middle of the night. And he was like shaking me and being like, we got to go. We got to go. And I was like, where do we got to go? And you were just like, now we need to go. We need to go. And I was like, Julian, where is it that we need to go? And you're like, we don't have time. We need to go. And you're like pulling, like he pulled me hard out of the bed. <laughs> and he's like, we don't have time. We need to go. We need to go. And just very insistent. And so then I was like, okay, Julian, but where are we going? And then he just eventually kind of were like, <sighs> he like got frustrated <laughs> and like sat back down on the bed. And then I was like, I think we need to go to sleep. Should we go to sleep, Julian? And then I think that, I don't know if that's a real thing with sleep talkers, but that you can like maybe talk them into something else. And I was like, I think we should go back to sleep. And then eventually you just kind of like laid down and went back to bed. Do you remember that at all? No. You don't even remember me telling you about that? Mm-mm. Sorry, I love Julian so much, but his memory sometimes was like, because that was a big thing the next day. Like when I told you about that, I was like, oh my gosh, babe, you dragged me out of bed. And we're like, we need to go. We need to go. <laughs> I just remembered that one earlier today because I knew we were filming this. So I was sitting mm -hmm. there trying to remember some of the things that you've done. Hmm. So, yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, besides sleepwalking, sleep talking, um, I just also mentioned before about the waking up in a terrified state. Those are called sleep terrors, actually. Mm -hmm. um, I do this. <laughs> Confusional arousals. You partially awake but are confused and disoriented in <laughs> time and space. Oh, yeah. You definitely do that. So I usually, when you're like talking to me and stuff, right at the end, I'll kind of just, you know, and I'm like, oh, whatever. Yep. <laughs> I think that's <laughs> what's happening because I kind of do remember waking up a little bit, mm -hmm. but then getting stressed out and then going back to sleep. Yeah. Yeah, there'll be, well, there's just too many times to list them all, but there'll be so many times where Julian will start saying something and I'll think he's talking to me, you know, because sometimes people do just say something to you in the middle of the night if they wake up and I'll think Julian is saying something to me. So I'll be responding to him and then he'll respond to me but like it won't make sense but then i'll keep responding to him and then you can kind of tell when there's a shift and he actually does kind of gain consciousness or something and then he's like oh nah 
I'm going to bed <laughs> or like, like whatever it is that he says. But I can tell when there is a difference between you talking to me when you're sleeping and then when you're like kind of gaining that consciousness and then you just seem confused and annoyed and go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, so most of the time, I don't think I say anything explicit. Do I? Not really. Like on occasion, mm -hmm. you'll say things, but it's not things that make sense. Like you'll say a sentence or mm -hmm. words, but it's <laughs> not really that coherent. Right. Yeah. And that, I think that's usually what it is. Um, obviously, sleep talking is not like, it can be anything. It can be clean, explicit. It can be a few mumbles. Some people shout. Mm-hmm. Screaming. <laughs> sleep screams. <laughs> Um, it can be short, simple sounds, or it can be long conversations with yourself. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because besides what you tell me, I don't really, I don't ever remember what I do in my sleep. Besides those odd times where I kind of wake up a little bit. Mm -hmm. But Julian, actually, I don't remember if I told you you did this a little bit ago, but I think I did tell you, but you might not remember. He got up out of bed and I was awake and he got up out of bed and he marched out of our room and came over into the living room middle of the night. And I thought he was coming into the living room to like turn on the air conditioning or something because mm -hmm. like, I was like, oh, maybe he's really hot and he got fed up with how hot it is because like he got up so abruptly to go into the living room. And then he was out here for a while and I was just sitting <laughs> in bed being like, did he get lost? Like, did he slay down on the ground and fall asleep? And then you eventually came back and crawled into bed. And I tried to talk to him and I was like, hey, like, what are, what were you doing? And he would not respond to me. So oh, I I think I remember you telling me about it. Yeah. yeah definitely <laughs> not a clue that happened. So I, was, cause I was trying to talk to him the next day. And I'm like, what were you doing in the living room last night? And he was like, what, what do you mean? I'm like, you got up and went to the living room. He's like, I don't remember. <laughs> Apparently I used to talk to my brother in my sleep because our rooms were beside each other. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we would have conversations with each other. <laughs> While you were both sleeping? Mm -hmm. We would both sleep talk to each oh, other. Oh, that's so creepy. Yeah, it is creepy. <laughs> Uh, but I'm part of the lucky 5% of adults who sleep talk. Yeah. Lucky quite, five. Yeah. It's quite, uh, it's common in children, uh, especially three to 10 years old. Um, they talk or mumble to themselves quite often. Do you want to share, uh, some of that stuff you found on Reddit? Oh yeah. Do our... Reddit section. What are we going to end up calling this one day? We need to pick up music to put with this. Reddit section. Reddit stories with J and J. <laughs> All right. So I was doing some Redditing and found this thread where someone was just asking if other people, they shared a story about something their girlfriend did while she was sleeping and then asked for other people to share any stories they've had of crazy sleep talking. So I'm just going to read you the story they put and then some of the comments of stories other people commented to it so we can hear a little bit about other people and not just mine and Julian's crazy experiences with his sleep talking. So the title is Girlfriend Ter Terrified Me with Sleep Talking Madness. What has a sleep talker told you to keep you up at night? And the poster writes, Last night, as usual, my partner fell asleep before I did and seemed to be sleeping away quite happily. After a while, I rolled over and was about to fall asleep myself when out of the blue, she rolled towards me and kind of whispered, It all goes white, you know. White static and noise. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Needless to say, I almost crapped my pants, mainly because of the creepy intonation, but also because I had no idea what she was on about. 
In the end, I just had to wake her to see if she could shed some light on it, but sadly, she didn't have a clue. (laughs) (laughs) That is pretty creepy. It all goes white, you know. White static and noise. That is very creepy. It's like ominous. Mm -hmm. I don't think you've ever said anything kind of ominous and scary to me. Not that I can remember. Not yet. But now that we've talked Not about yet. It, maybe I will. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be on your radar. Mm-hmm. This person writes that my girlfriend once sat upright in the middle of the night, looked directly at me and said, it will all disappear just like the ones you love. She went to sleep again right after that, but I was too freaked out to go back to bed. <laughs> That's the thing, too, is Julian does, he just seems awake a lot of the times when he's talking to me. Like, his eyes will be wide open. And, like, there have been times where, like, yeah, you'll roll over and you'll, like, kind of tap me and say something to me. And, like, you look completely awake, but you're not. And it's freaky. (laughs) This person says, my ex and I were napping on her couch and randomly I just wake up to being choked. Seriously, legitimately strangled. She had one hand on my windpipe and was giving me this half-asleep devil look. I broke her grip and yelled, what the F, Nate, blank name. (laughs) That broke her trance. She finally looked really confused for a bit, and I had to explain what just happened. She finally fell back asleep, but it took me a bit longer. Hmm. Subconscious thoughts. Yeah, that's scary. (laughs) This person says, I didn't have a computer in college, so I used my neighbors to type up papers late at night. Late one night, I hear him smack his lips, and in a sing-song voice, he goes, pepperoni. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. He says, I fell off the chair laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That would be pretty funny. I don't think you've had any food dreams that you vocalized. Yeah, surprising. (laughs) This one is, this person says, My dad likes to tell me a story of him and my mom when they were young and newly wed. It had been one of the first nights they spent together when my mom suddenly sits up in bed and stares in the direction of the closet in complete darkness. My dad, not quite asleep, notices her and asks, What's wrong? My mom turns to him, points to the closet, and whispers, There's someone in the closet. Dad, crapping bricks, gets out of bed, grabs something to defend himself with, and goes to the closet. Lo and behold, it's empty. When he turns on the light, my mom wakes up and returns to consciousness and gets angry at him. What are you doing up this late? Go back to bed. She lies back down, rolls over, and falls asleep. (laughs) My dad is left wondering what the heck just happened. Mm. Wow. What did I get myself into? (laughs) (laughs) And another big thing actually is um, sleep peeing. Mm. Like that's a big thing. I know this one person who grew up and struggled with sleep peeing all the time. And just a list of some of the things that they had peed in over their life growing up is uh, a pile of dirty clothes. A fridge, Mm -hmm. a glass, and a hockey card collection. Hmm. (laughs) Poor child had it rough. (laughs) Mm -mm. Dang, sleeping. Our uh, previous episode there, maybe it means some numbers of some sort. (laughs) What, what, What did P add up to? I am plus two. Yeah, or something. Equals God. Yeah exclamation point (laughs) if you have no idea what we're talking about listen to episode 12 where we talk about apophonia 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 where people see interesting patterns and correlation between words and letters and things yeah so meaning and randomness yep finding meaning in the chaos (laughs) so let's let's try to find some meaning that's not so random, and why sleep talking occurs. I would love to. So, I'm going to start this off by they don't really know. 
<laughs> it's just guesses. Yeah, pretty much. They do have a few theories on it. Um, some people believe that it's a vocalization of dreams. But this theory, there's not much scientific proof, mainly because how do you test what someone's dreaming? Because mm-hmm. a lot of the time you don't remember the dream. For sure. But maybe it is, maybe it isn't, who knows. Well, let's hear what these theories are. Um, another theory is that it's completely random. Um, there's a term called automata- automatism, which is, and this is from the APA um, dictionary, a non-purposeful behavior performed mechanically without intention or awareness. So this is something as, um, they can be motor, such as lip smacking, chewing, swallowing, bouncing your leg, or verbal, which would be like repeating a phrase multiple times in s- short secession um (laughs) that's funny (laughs) that is basically what an automatism is (laughs) um so stuff like that (laughs) um and it oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) threw yourself off now yeah yeah seeing it in action (laughs) it occurs in a lot of scenarios such as schizophrenia or obviously in seizures, the motor. Um, but who's to say that sleep talking is not like this and it's just random? Hmm. Um, I don't know. I didn't put a ton of thought in this, but maybe you could find a correlation between um, epileptic individuals, the amount of sleep talking they do, and then see if their sleep talking subsides when they start taking medication. Hmm. That's a really interesting thought. I, how do you ch- did you check if anyone's? I didn't done yet. Anything no. on that? Hmm. But just a thought. Man, people just need to listen to our podcast and just like steal all of these interesting research ideas. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. Do it. We're not going to do it. So someone else, please do. <laughs> um. So I often mutter random things in my sleep. What do you think the most common um, words spoken are in someone's sleep? Just a single word? No. Yes, that's correct. Is it? Do I say no a lot? Oh, yeah. Really? Uh-huh. Oh. Oh. I am a And I just feel like there's often probably things happening in people's dreams that, like, they don't want to happen. <laughs> so they're like, no. <laughs> no, no. Stop it. And I feel like... No is a word that would be easy to vocalize in your sleep, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's almost a word that you wouldn't even have to think. It's more like a reflex in mm-hmm. a sense. So it makes sense to me that it would be one of the most common things people say. Mm-hmm. Almost a, a quarter of it is negative content in another study. But on the no, yes thing, do I say yes ever? I don't really think so. No. No. Hmm. Do people say yes quite often? Um, I didn't find anything on it, but it kind of makes sense that you would want, you wouldn't say anything if the dream, you were okay with the dream, but if you didn't want the dream, kind of like. It's that reflex of being like, no, 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 no. no. Mm -hmm. Um, Apparently, some of the studies when people did remember their dreams, it was kind of correlated to what they uh, experiences in their daily life. So the people that would dream a lot, say something happened the day before, and they would dream something similar. Obviously, it would be bizarre, but it would be along the same lines. Interesting. There is this when I was doing the research for trying to find that Reddit thread. I found another Reddit thread that talked about this guy who narrates his dreams. Hmm. And his roommate started recording him. This was a long time ago that it happened. And his roommate started recording him sleeping and narrating his dreams. And they actually, like, got a deal with some kind of publisher and sold hmm. his dream narrations. Oh. And you can actually access them all on YouTube or most of them on YouTube. I'm blanking on the name of them right now. But I will try to 
put it in the, if I remember, I'll put it into the Mm -hmm. captions for the thing. But it's just the oddest thing. I listened to one of his videos online and it was called The Diet. It's a, oh yeah, this is what it's called. The Dream World of Dion McGregor. And so this one I was listening to, I'll play just a couple seconds of it for people to hear. Oh, I love little starch picnics. We're having a starch dinner. Mm-hmm. 33 kinds of potato. All the rice you can eat, yes. Mm-hmm. Beans, lima beans. And Boston baked beans, yes. <laughs> so, like, this clip is a minute and eight seconds long. And there's just so many of them. So if you type into YouTube, the dream world of Dion McGregor, you'll be able to see short clips of all mm-hmm. of his different dream narrations. And this one, he ends up making like a 26 layer starch lasagna. Mm-hmm. But anyways, I don't even remember why I brought that up, but that was just like a side note of another thing that was interesting to do mm-hmm. with sleep talking is this guy narrates what's happening in his dream but doesn't like remember doing it and stuff just Hmm. for whatever reason. Weird. Another, the third explanation I found was um, memory consolidation. So researchers were studying the neural activity of zebra finches during their development. So like teenagers, I guess, Mm -hmm. um, and discovered that the playback of song during the day matched the neural activity during the night when they were sleeping. Hmm. So the reactivation looks the same as if they were actually singing. So it could support that the idea that sleep talking could be the same process. So they sing in their sleep. No, but their brains activate the same way as if they were singing. Hmm. Makes me think too, like what if uh, like singing to babies in the womb. Do you think that's the same thing? What do you mean by the same thing? Consolidating, learning how to speak and all this stuff and their brain remembers it. Maybe. I feel like I've seen stuff about that, like that you actually should be like playing Mm -hmm. classical music for Mm -hmm. your kids and talking to them even when they're in the womb because to some degree it's getting through to them. Yeah, so, honestly. I'll have to ask our friend, one of our best friends, Latasha, is going to be due very soon here with her first baby, so Mm -hmm. we better send her a message and say, hey, are you talking to him? (laughs) Let's start talking to him. Mm -hmm. But, that being said, why do these sleep disorders occur? Why do people sleep talk? So, So, most of them are actually caused by health issues. Um, So if you're sick or have fevers, um, people have, um, I think they sleep talk or like jump out of sleep a lot when they're that. Um, Alcohol or substance abuse, stress, mental health conditions. Apparently that one's a big one is that there's a high correlation between mental illness and those psychiatric disorders and sleep talking. Sleep deprivation shift work or jet lag, of course, head injuries. It's an obvious one. Pregnancy or menstruation, caffeine, probably more so before bed, and then electronic screens. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of those reasons definitely make sense why they would have an impact on your sleep cycles. When I was trying to quit smoking, um, I tried those nicotine patches And if you fall asleep with a nicotine patch, you actually have crazy dreams. And did you only notice that when using patches? Not like if you smoked a bunch before you went to bed or something? Just patches. And I think because you were literally getting nicotine as you were sleeping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. High fat intake also disrupts sleep. Um, Studies show that individuals with high fat diets... Um, Woke up more, tossed and turned throughout the night. Um, Disrupted sleep is the reason people would have these sleep disorders. Um, Eating spicy food before bed. 
and it interferes with uh, thermal regulation. Basically makes you feel um, hotter than normal. Obviously that um, increases occurrences. Things are we saying? All my spicy food I eat might be making me have bad sleeps. Maybe. Hmm. Bad sleeps, spicy food. (laughs) So how do you lower the instances of sleep talking? Well, have a regular sleep schedule and sleep enough hours a night. Lower your intake of foods and drinks that inhibit sleep. Avoid electronics later at night. Lower the room temperature. And maybe that's why I sleep talk all the time so hot in our room all the time see well we're obviously opposites on this because to me it's cold in our room all the time <laughs> so yeah that's why you don't uh sleep talk <laughs> always freezing i have to sleep with julian has like just a sheet on and i have two quilts stacked on top of each other you have a cold human being and then of course lower the light exposure in the room always sleep better when there's darkness Mm -hmm. yeah we have blackout curtains so that's good but i feel like one of the things that's the hardest to do is trying to limit electronic use before bed because for most people i'm sure us included nighttime is you know the time when you're most likely to have free time where you're like okay yeah let's watch a movie let's do this scroll on some social media and stuff So it's pretty hard to limit that before you go to bed. But Julian's been trying to get us into a good habit of reading before bed. Julian is quite good at it, although you are reading on a tablet. So (laughs) technically... I can turn night type mode on. True. You should actually. Yeah, you should do that. Because I think it's a blue light that matters. Yeah, probably is. I guess... Well, if you wear your glasses also, you don't wear your glasses, but you should because those block out some of the blue light too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, that's the episode for today. If you have any topics you want us to talk about, uh, make sure you let us know in the DMs or uh, on YouTube. Send us an email. Literally, we would be so ecstatic if someone would leave a comment that's other than our family. Yeah, that would be fun. So you can find us everywhere at PWMW Podcast. Yeah. We post every Tuesday, so make sure you hit that subscribe, follow, and set that auto-download so you don't miss an episode. See ya. Bye.